What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at the benchmark tool for Black Myth Wukong on the RX 7900XTX with a Ryzen 7800X 3D. We're going to compare a few different presets, different settings, 4K and 1440p, so let's not waste any time and dive straight into it. We're going to begin with 4K native and compare the three graphical presets, cinematic, very high and high. So we're going to begin here with uh, practically a, a kick to the balls. <laughs> we're getting 35 FPS average with the cinematics preset. So that's the maximum on the left. And then in the middle, we have very high preset, 39 average FPS. And on the right, we have the high preset at 50 FPS average. So the high actually doesn't look too bad, but there is some noticeable differences like a bit of a softer image assets, but mostly there's a bit of a visual pop in uh, that you're going to see if we skip down to the forest at the end of the river. It's going to be a similar comparison to my RTX 4090 video. Basically, it's I did the same thing. Now, as far as ray tracing, I don't think it's really possible or worth it, but I will dig into it a little bit later in the video. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the very high graphical preset because the goal is to kind of go for maximum visual fidelity if we can. Since we're using a high-end GPU as well, it kind of makes sense. And since I made the same exact comparisons on my RTX 4090, we can do a little bit of a quick head-to-head -head just, to, just to see if there's any noticeable differences. Well, here we go, guys. The 7900XTX on the left and RTX 4090 on the right. They're both running at native 4K with a very high graphical preset ray tracing off. The Radeon GPU is using FSR 100% resolution scale, so FSR AA. And the NVIDIA GPU is using DLSS 100% resolution scale, so DLAA. Now, if we look at the average FPS, the 4090 is about 13 FPS ahead, which amounts to 35%-ish faster, I think. It's around 30, 35%. Uh, that's just kind of interesting because I read some comments of people saying that they were getting stutters on their Radeon GPU, and that's not what I'm seeing here. Actually, the Radeon GPU is running very smooth in that regard. As a matter of fact, it's got slightly better 1% lows uh, if you were to compare, you know, uh, the average FPS to the 1% lows, but uh, they're both doing actually pretty good. Now, FSR here, well, it's better than other Unreal Engine 5 games, but there is a bit of ghosting, especially when you compare it to DLSS. For example, look at these falling leaves here in the distance. On the left, we have uh, definitely increased level of ghosting versus on the right. But I mean, other than that, uh, other than this specific scenario, FSR is actually pretty good. And DLSS is not uh, immune to ghosting either. As you drop in the quality settings, uh, there is a bit of ghosting there as well. But yeah, since I had the footage, I wanted to compare them for you guys. So here it is. Anyway, let's move on to the next part. For the next part, we're going to stick to the very high graphical preset. And here we have 4K very high with FSR native AA on the left. And on the right, we've turned on FSR quality and we've gained quite a bit of performance. Now we're actually very close to getting 60 FPS. So turn FSR to quality saw us gain about uh, a 50% more FPS. If you were to look at the average FPS, that's actually pretty good. That's a really nice gain, uh, which is actually not unusual uh, for Unreal Engine 5 games. We've seen this happen many times where you enable upscaling and you get a bunch of performance back. And FSR looks very, very good, actually. Other than those few minor uh, ghosting issues that can kind of pop up here and there, but for the most part, it actually looks really good. I mean, here you have it. You have native 4K on the left and FSR quality on the right. You can see for yourself, I would say it looks really, really good. And that takes us to almost 60 FPS. But we also have frame generation that we can toggle on top of that. So. I say we try that and uh, see what happens because with DLSS frame generation, we actually gained a ton more FPS by turning that on. So I'm hoping the same will happen with FSR. Let's check it out. All 
All right, guys, so we've gone ahead and turned frame generation on top of FSR quality. That's on the right. And on the left, we have 4K with just FSR quality. And we gained a ton of FPS with frame generation, okay? So we're averaging 60 FPS with just FSR quality. By turning frame generation, it sees an increase of over 70% more FPS on the averages. So this is actually very, very similar gains to what we saw on the RTX 4090 when we turned DLSS frame generation on. This is actually pretty good. Uh, this is an Unreal Engine 5 game because I see some comments here and there where people just flip out and uh, they're saying games are unoptimized messes and this and that. This is an Unreal Engine 5 game, guys. Uh, I've tested a ton of Unreal Engine 5 games, practically all of them. And I would say this actually runs pretty good. <laughs> Yes, it's a demanding game, but it's also a next-gen, gorgeous-looking game. I'd say it's one of the better-looking Unreal Engine 5 games. Uh, right up there with uh, Fort Solace. I would say Fort Solace was a very highly detailed Unreal Engine 5 games. And this one is uh, very, very high-detailed, high-quality visuals. So, yeah, that's going to be demanding. And it's going to require upscaling because these engines are designed around that. So, I understand if people don't like it, but I'm not going to join some crusade. If I see stutters and shader compilation stutters... I will point that out. I've been very aggressive about that. But for this game, I don't see any issues. So, yeah, let's move on to the next part. For this next part, I wanted to drop it down to FSR balance. So we have that on the left. And then on the right, we have FSR balance with frame generation on top. And while we're getting really good FPS... It's actually not that big of a gain as we saw going from native to FSR quality. Actually, the gain is fairly small. And I wanted to check out FSR balance because we also looked at DLSS balance on my 4090 video. And DLSS balance looked pretty good. And actually, I think FSR balance looks pretty good as well. But it's not any massive gains in FPS. As a matter of fact, let's take a quick look at FSR quality versus balance. Now, as you can see, we gained about uh, 7 FPS on the averages. So that's about uh, around 10%-ish, maybe 15%. Now, that's a much smaller gain than we saw going from 4K native to FSR quality, which I believe was like around 50% more FPS. But still, a gain is a gain and uh, still pretty good. So, yeah, there's FSR balance and FSR quality for you guys. And if you want to check out the differences, well, here they are side by side to me. They look pretty close. Well, that pretty much concludes our look at 4K resolution. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at 1440p as well. And then we'll take a little bit of a dive into ray tracing. Because why the heck not? We're going to start our 1440p part of this video with FSR 100% resolution scale. So FSR AA and the very high graphical preset. And what do you know? We're right at 60 FPS. Native 1440p, FSR AA, very high graphical preset. That's pretty good. Solid performance, actually. And again, for an Unreal Engine 5, this is actually pretty good, <laughs> believe it or not. But what about FSR quality? Let's take a look at that. Well, if we turn on FSR quality at 1440p on the right, we go from 61 average FPS to 7880 average FPS. So that's actually a pretty good gain. It's a, I think it's about like 30 to 35% more FPS. And the game still actually looks pretty good. FSR quality at 1440p, I'd say still looks pretty good. I think at balance, I mean, even with DLSS at balance, it can be hit or miss at 1440p especially but in this particular case i think fsr quality actually looks fine and you get a nice bump <laughs> to your fps as well but that also still leaves us with frame generation which in this game works pretty good so why don't we go ahead and throw frame generation on top of fsr quality as well and see what we get and here it is, guys. We have FSR quality with frame generation on the right, FSR quality in the middle, and 1440p native on the left. Well, frame generation saw a huge increase in FPS. We went from 62 at 1440p native all the way to 140 almost average FPS with FSR quality and frame generation. 
that's a more than 100% gain in total FPS. That's actually really, really good. It's like 110, 120, something like that. That is really, really good. So there you have it, guys. And you can compare for yourself. And there is a bit of ghosting, as you can see here with these leaves. Like I said, there is certain things that do ghost with FSR. I mean, even, even at native AA, actually, uh, that can happen. But for the most part, I think it actually looks pretty good. What about ray tracing, though? Let's take a look at that. All right, so let's begin with 1440p here and see what we can do. We're going to start with FSR quality, full ray tracing on and very high. So the ray tracing is maxed out. The graphical preset is on very high, but I've set shadow quality and global illumination to high. Those are two of the most demanding settings in Unreal Engine 5 games, usually all the time. There could be a couple other ones here as well, but I know those uh, those uh, cost a bit more performance. So I've tweaked those down a little bit. Let's see what happens. And it's terrible, guys. 25 FPS at 1440p with FSR set to quality and full ray tracing. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't think path tracing is worth it unless you have an RTX 4000 GPU. It, it just isn't. If you've noticed, the path trace games began to arrive with the RTX 4000 series of cards. That's because Nvidia made some really nice improvements to their ray tracing architecture. They also introduced shader execution reordering, which all these path tracing games take advantage of. And it's just like a massive hit. It, the reason why I say it's not worth it is because to even get somewhat playable FPS with uh, ray tracing or path tracing in this game, you would have to brutalize your uh, your uh, resolution, very aggressive upscaling that it just trashes the image. I mean, even the water looks a bit grainy to me uh, for some reason. So I don't know, but hey, this is very high ray tracing. What about medium, right? We should be able to gain a bit um, bit more performance if we drop to medium. Let's Let's try that. Let's go from very high to medium. All right, guys, so here we go. Medium ray tracing. Well, that sees us gain a pretty decent bump in FPS. But look at the reflections. They look terrible. They, they look blurry. I, I, I don't really like the way the, the reflections look with ray tracing on medium. Although we do retain that very nice, huge improvements to global illumination and shadows. If you look at the, the tree shadows and the foliage shadows, they actually, with ray tracing, they look much better than with ray tracing off or the lumen software that they're using it's trash it's just way too flickery unstable i'm not a huge fan of the ue5 uh, shadows sometimes they, they can be very unstable but hey with a uh, fsr quality at 1440p and medium ray tracing i mean we're still at 30 fps right you turn frame generation on here it's not going to feel good at all uh, the FPS is just way too low, and the water doesn't look that great to me. But what about low? I've actually never tried low ray tracing. Let's let's give that a try. All right, so this is ray tracing on low, and hey, we still retain the improved shadows, although they don't look as defined. But the water, man, looks terrible. Why does it look so bright? Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. I would not use ray tracing on low. I would just not use ray tracing altogether. Uh, unless you have an RTX 4000 GPU, in my opinion, anyway. Um, now, as far as the performance, we did gain a, a few FPS, nothing major, maybe five, six FPS at most, just from going from medium to, to low. So, yeah, I don't think... Let's see if we can see this guy's torch uh, reflection on the water. No, we can't. So it looks like the reflections are massively nerfed here. Actually, the reflections look better if you just turn ray tracing off completely instead of uh, staying on low. So yeah, I think in my opinion, unless uh, I think ray tracing very high is where it's at. Medium kind of hurts the reflections and then low just doesn't look good at all in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, ray tracing. But what about if, what if we were to, to be persistent about this and hard-headed about this, right? I know some people that would be. Let's try 1080p. That's right. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to drop the resolution to 1080. We're going to leave it with FSR quality and ray tracing on very high. With the preset, with a mix of very high and high. Okay, let's see what happens. 
And here we go, guys. We still can't hit anywhere close to 60. We're at 35 FPS. That's 1080p with FSR set to quality. So you see what I mean? It's not even worth trying. Look at how grainy the water looks now uh, at 1080p. It just doesn't look good. I mean, who plays on a 1080p monitor with a 7900XTX anyway? Well, maybe there's some esports players that probably would with crazy high refresh rate monitors. But yeah, this the image quality here looks pretty bad. I would not uh, use FSR or probably even DLSS at 1080p. It just doesn't look good. So that's what I'm saying, guys. I wanted to try ray tracing because, well, I'm curious about it anyway, but I don't think it's worth it. I think if you care about path tracing or whatever, you're a massive disadvantage unless you have an RTX 4000 GPU, and that's just uh, that's just a fact. But anyway, guys, that's that's my opinion about the whole ray tracing thing, and this was my look at the Wukong benchmark tool on the RX 7900 XTX. Um, ray tracing, I would not bother. It's a waste of time. Compromise is way too great. You're just gonna destroy your image quality trying to make it happen. But without the ray tracing, the game still looks amazing and the XCX crushes it at 4K. You can easily throw on some FSR quality, get 60 FPS or throw on some FSR frame generation on top of that and hit 100. That's very good. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Give it a like if you liked it and consider subscribing if you want to see more content. I will see you on the next one. Peace.